blandly un, uninteresting at the moment. You know, it is. Uh, you can't sing to it. You can't dance to it. It's like title screen music. Yeah, yeah, it is or like, like title pause screen. music. That's sure. unfair to really. That's unfair to really good uh, title <laughs> screen music. <though>. True. <laughs> True that. Well, hey, um, this is like title music in a licensed movie video game. Yeah, yeah. Or it's it's definitely so. There's good music at the end of a movie, and then it stops, and the credits start playing. The actual mm -hmm. credits. Mm -hmm. This, yeah, it's it's this. But listen, what it really is is uh, the intro music for Mutants and Masterminds Monday. And Mutants and Masterminds Monday, for those of you who don't know is a weekly program brought to you by green running publishing and the folks who are on the program are developers and friends and fans and pals and all sorts of things i am disembodied troy and i'm kind of your host your provocateur your um well and your pal as well uh but these two friends Ooh, look at that. Look good. Void. You are... You're in the void. There oh. you are. You are now voidless. The void look back. It did. It did. Um, Dominic, you're a guest today, and I'm really excited that you're here. We've got so many things to talk about. And Ooh, uh, you Alex, you are the line lead for Mutants and Masterminds. We're really calling you the Mutants and Master Bro, tis, which tis I like. It is an honor. Wow. Well, I don't know about all that, but I am happy to be here chatting with you today, Dominic. Yeah. So today's episode is an idea that was brought to the floor by our good friend, Oranon. Who happens to be an incredibly close friend of mine. That's right. You know, it was really interesting, so. Dominic. You know, Oranon had the idea for this, and, you know, it's a great subject all onto its own. Uh, we put out a call and said, hey, folks you have an idea for some stuff and you came forward with your idea. And I thought, well, you know what, why not marry the two ideas and, uh, and have a discussion that also leads to some sort of practical application in uh, in an adventure. And then we can kind of check in and see how it, uh, how it worked out. Um, you know, yeah. if, and when you're able to run it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that sounds like, that sounds really good. Awesome. Well, it sounds good. So now, uh, I know, Alex, you were refreshing yourself on some, uh, you were grabbing some examples of uh, epic vehicles and things. Let's first set the stage for what is the, what are we doing today? So, Dominic, explain a little bit about your idea and how the discussion of high-tech headquarters and epic vehicles uh, snaps into this so well, and, and let's give yeah. it some context and then dive in. So, sort of my my general conceit is for a team and a, you know, uh, to be supported by the headquarters and vehicles uh, of rescuers, sort of uh, people who go out and respond to dangerous disasters all over the world and rescue people. And it's not about, you know, punching the big bad guy at the end of the day it's about overcoming the odds and saving people. All right, I like it. Now you had used an, an example. Was it the Thunderbirds? Was that it? Yes, the Th Thunderbirds is like sort of my primary inspiration for this type of thing. But I know there are also other shows and other media that sort of take that idea and run with it. And there are definitely a lot of shows where the vehicles that the characters pilot are kind of more the central stars of the yeah. show than the actual pilots themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and, and it's such an evocative example. It really kind of helps sort of, um, you know, get to get to sort of the overall vision for this. And now Alex, you, when you look at sort of the, the conundrum around, High tech headquarters and epic vehicles. What are we solving for? Ooh, I'm getting some. Uh, oh, they're doing oh, no, some construction. An algebra in my face. <laughs> I know, right? Right? <laughs> exactly. Um, but but I'm curious about sort of how they break that down. Yeah. So a vehicle and a, or a headquarters, they are equipment that you can purchase for your character in Mutants Masterminds using equipment points. 
um, and they sort of soar, serve multiple functions. I'll start with vehicles first. Uh, vehicles can be a lot of different things in your campaign. Um, they can just be a way of getting your characters from point A to point B if you're looking at something like well, like a Quinjet or something like a Javelin plane from the Justice League cartoon, something that the, the team uses to get to their adventures but doesn't often play a big role in what's going on. Or the vehicle can be a character all of its own, uh, something right. that plays a big role in the drama of the story, something like how Ghost Rider always has a motorcycle he can call on, or Batman is able to bring the Batplane or the Batmobile to increase his effectiveness in a fight yeah, against more you know, the, 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 the Starship Enterprise is a yes. is a central character in Star Trek. Hey, yeah, of or, if you're going, or if you're going really old school, Kit from Knight Rider is, oh, is, a, is yeah. a character, but also a vehicle. That makes a lot of sense. So, so Dominic, in, in the context of those examples, what do you see sort of the over what, – what do, do you see these – these pieces of equipment, this, this, these epic vehicles as being, because your vehicle can also be your, your HQ, right? Right. Yeah. So vehicles can definitely also sort of can, vehicles, once they get to a certain size can, uh, vehicles, once they get to a certain size can absolutely be a headquarters. Um, and you can buy a lot of the headquarters features at, at the same rate that you do on a headquarters. Like the most common ones, I think, are like you know. Apologies, they're doing some construction that feels like they're doing it at the center of my my brain, and so you might hear some rattling. And um, can you hear me all right? Can you also hear that noise? <laughs> it's piercing. Um, so hey, real quick, I just realized, um, uh, chat. <coughs> excuse me, you are. Uh, I see you. I apologies for um, for jumping over here. I was so excited to get into the subject. I was like, let's keep on keeping on. Um, I know that there are questions from folks who are uh, in the audience and kind of listening to us. We'll we'll pick those up now. Do me a favor, friends. If you uh, mention your question and we don't get to it right away, just repost it again. Um, we're actually working on some stuff behind the scenes to to track your questions. But for now, um, just keep on keeping on, um, and we'll we'll get to you in due time. And if not, it's because I'm ignoring you, you know, on purpose. That's um, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what is the process of of sort of making the determination? You know, do you uh, how much time do you spend on your on your HQ? How deep do you go into it? What sort of resources should you be looking for? Um, and and related to your vehicles, how much development is it? Just as much time as you're creating a character? Is it? Are there maybe different approaches or things that you don't consider? Well, this uh, I'll say this, and I say this a lot of the time. This all boils down to the session zero for your campaign, right? And the and the campaign concept. If the GM believes the vehicle and HQ should play a big part in what's going on, like you're going to be the solemn protectors of one city, it makes sense to have a place that you can all hang out in in that location. Uh, but if you're going to be like a globe traveling, a globe trotting superhero or monster hunter, it makes more sense to have your HQ be your vehicle and drive around in your black Impala with your big trunk full of weapons. <laughs> yeah. Now, Dominic, do you see this as being sort of uh, there? You know, this is a uh, a group that responds to disasters in a in a kind of a global sense. Are they like floating definitely around in a cloud in a global, city? Yeah, definitely in a global sense. In fact, sort of what I'm hoping to to pivot off of and to take some notes out of your book uh, from the Mumamo. I think it was two three weeks ago. Um, was that this is an international team. It's an international aid yeah. rescue organization uh, that flies around the world doing all of this. So what I actually do kind of see, though, is I do actually kind of see having a central base that kind of stays in one place. Um, because my, my line of reasoning is that when you are globetrotting, when you are constantly you know, visiting new locales, different locations. It's nice to have a central location that you can return to and that you can expand upon and flesh out as though, you know, it, it's the stand-in for the city that... Right, right. 
Yeah, and, and a place to gather and, and have training and have discussions yeah. and and not necessarily, especially if you're if you're operating on the there's a crisis and it's disastrous. Um, you might want to have some training scenarios that aren't necessarily around other people. You know right. what I mean? Like sort of a a, a, a protected sort of uh, space that you can kind of destroy and make a big mess and not have to worry about actually making a big disaster. <laughs> the natural disaster danger room sounds like the coolest place ever. Doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, that's something I definitely w- want to include. And I- I'm thinking of playing it like it- it's not like a holodeck sort of thing. It's just they have a bunch of different simulation rooms for I like, it. like all the different kinds of disasters that you might mm-hmm. go into and they're like practical they're done with practical effects as it were yeah yeah so so we're just we're talking actual like you know a flooded room uh you know uh yeah. probably some hologram you know uh, aspects to it with actual fire and you know yeah. all the all the all the components that make a disaster disastery So that's, Aura Non mentions a hub as a concept, which I really yeah. like. I know it's video gamey, but it is but it cool to have. Reason. Yeah, it's cool to have a headquarters oh, yeah. that you that can follow you around, or a headquarters you can get to from anywhere, like the Rock of Eternity, where you can just open a closet door and be there. <laughs> or okay, like, so in this case, are we looking at something of? Um, uh, is it like I don't know? In my mind, I can't stop thinking of a floating, you know, kind of HQ that sort of, you know, uh, I think of uh, Shield. The hell or the yeah. hell carriers, yeah, yeah. What do you yeah. think, Dom? What's your what is your? Uh... That could be cool. I could also see, I could also see it being like a floating. When you say floating, I could also see it being like a sea base. Oh yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Like surface, surface of the ocean, sea base kind of well, thing. Yeah, well, given how much water yeah. there is on the Earth, it kind of might make sense to have something that could be, even yeah. be submergible, you know, and. Yeah, or at the very least, like a coastal. At the very least, I think it would be coastal, because mm-hmm. yeah, they have to be able to practice water rescues. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Satellites are always cool too. Oh shoot! Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, is yeah. is it the case that if you're in space, if your HQ is in space, it can pretty much get to where it needs to go quicker because of it because it's in space or is it a little bit more complex it depends i I think both are true (laughs) yeah yeah it's a very very much it's a it depends yes no (laughs) sure well you know here's a question um if why not all of the things in space (laughs) or on the water or in the water under the water kind of you know like Mm -hmm. i would imagine if you're set up for space travel that you'll do all right under the sea yeah i i think i definitely i definitely have an idea of how i want i'd want to incorporate like a satellite into it i don't think i would have it be the team's primary hub well, we're here to, to serve your grander vision, and so yeah. you call the shots, and then let's let's kind of talk about sort of the HQ as a as a place where the epic vehicles are, and then kind of roll roll in that direction, start big mm-hmm. and and uh, and get granular. Yeah. Also, I just want to look at some of the questions. Oh, I love that Ant Man style, and just carry your headquarters around in your pocket. That's great. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's. The accidental uh, "oh, look, it's growing" kind of thing could be. I uh, need. I need an acronym for luggage. <laughs> oh, 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 it's great. Oh, I got. I, oh, great. Now I have to come up with an acronym for luggage. All right. Thanks. Uh, that's awesome. All right. So, so where we're at right now, um, uh, Dominic, give me, give us your your parameters, and then, and then let's just kind of talk about like what special about that high tech headquarters that it kind of either plays a role as a character or. You know, mm-hmm. sort of as the as the center point where all things begin and end. What are some yeah. of the parameters from in your vision? Yeah, I, I think I see it. I think I see it less as a character in the sense of the physical space, and more of a character in the terms of it is the place where there are all these NPCs and like all the regular reoccurring NPCs are at the headquarters. Sure, sure. So your your commander, your 
uh, who's sending them out on missions, your your Q, who's building all the equipment. And... Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, you yes. sort of maybe so, maybe a communications person who's always sort of the one yeah. saying, "Hey, watch out! There's a you know, or we're getting a we're deployed to this. We're getting a yeah, thing. yeah. So like that's what I think of when I think in terms of like the place as a character, less that the physical space is the character and more that the people within it have just so much character to them. I that, like it. Oh, I like it. And the HQ sort of, the whole place feels like it's a character. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a great source of consistency in a traveling campaign where you have NPCs that you run into every session or so. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the main cast usually changes when you're traveling from town to town to town. Like you won't run into the same yeah. victims or whatever, like you would in a, in a home base. Yeah. All right. I love that. I love that. Um, I want to. I mean, occasionally you can subvert that for like the wait, you you're in danger again. <laughs> sure. Last time we saw you, you were in Egypt. Sure, right, right. What, yeah. what are you doing here? Right. So that, that can or the fun. guy that says my but... cabbages. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. All right, great. Well, so that 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 helps, um, Alex. When thinking about sort of that sort of setting, where would you go in the um, kind of the the library of Eminem to just kind of uh, draw on inspiration and, uh, and also to help guide sort of what the parameters are. Well, there's a couple of cool resources we have to talk about vehicles and HQ specifically. Um, they're in the deluxe heroes handbook where you can find the basic rules for them, but there's a decent section in the super team handbook that talks about team headquarters and things <laughs> right, and team vehicles. Uh, but you can also go to the gadget guide, uh, which has a lot of information about mecha specific vehicles. Like if your vehicle, if your vehicle is the superhero and you're the pilot on the inside, sort of that's the if that's the deal your game is looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and there's some stuff I might pull from with that. Nice. Yeah. There's actually a character in my next book who is a living building that I'm having a lot of fun with. Ooh. Okay. Cool. Yeah, he, he turned himself into a tower in order to avoid getting purged in the wizard purge, but he couldn't figure out how to turn himself back. So he's been a building for 90 years. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'll drop uh, oh, that gadget. Super, it's super weird, but I love it. Yeah. Uh, so we said gadget, gadget guides, and what were the other two? Oh, yeah, super team handbook. H- and and as Simon says, there's some HQ stuff in Hero High. Yes, Hero High and the, and the Deluxe Heroes handbook. Nice. Yeah. And the super team book. Very cool. Uh, what's what? Uh, how does what's in Hero High differ from, uh, or or what what is that sort of well intriguing? Um, the headquarters is a very important thing for teen superhero groups in particular because sure. they're usually coming from one location, like a school, or like Towers Titan Titan Tower. In I, I was Titans. going to say, or a giant ridiculous T shaped tower. I don't know why you <laughs> want that, just because. Mm. And that's that's mostly because they need to have a place where they can all meet up because usually teens are less able to control where they move in the world, and there's usually an authority they have to answer to, and they need to be based out of somewhere. Oh. So. Having, Dang, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, having like Claremont Academy as a rallying point for your teen superheroes gives them a, a reason to all be together during the time of day that they have to be away from home. Mm. That's cool. That's a cool, like, that's like a storytelling conceit that I never like really considered in, in, in that like framing. Huh. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Very cool. And then um, now, Dominic, as far as sort of looking at the various things that an HQ can do, and we kind of, I think we've kind of figured out the mm. character and the, you know, and the kind of resources that you get there, some training, you know, some uh, expertise, NPCs that would talk about the various things like, you know, the, the what is her name? Edna what? Edna the Mode. Yeah, yeah. Edna Mode. <laughs> the real villain of the story. Um, yes. Capes yeah. don't hurt you if you have Velcro on your cape. You know, and that is so funny. Honestly, I had never thought of that until we talked about it on this show. <laughs> I love capes. Okay, I will defend capes till the day mm-hmm. I die. I I'm think a you fan need of capes too. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like uh, like she had done. She's done some damage to the uh, to the world of capes, and mm-hmm. uh, we're here to undo it. Yeah. Okay. If you don't have a cape, you're not a superhero. You're a wrestler. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, my hobby. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you can be both. <laughs> I love it. Uh, strong words, friends. Strong words. Um, capes are cool. Yeah. Drama Dork says capes are cool. Oh yeah. He's always at the place where they go to get club. Like yeah, the clubhouse, the treehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So um, 
and it also this place is the the storage you know facility repair space for these epic vehicles uh yeah so th there's definitely going to be the garage feature yeah, the workshop yeah. feature and when we're talking about the size of these vehicles are they dependent upon their specialty or do they you know like do they all come together to form you know um a particular like um, a thing or my 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 thought on it is that each vehicle is its own separate thing they don't come together to form one mega vehicle sure, sure. but but they do all fit on like a carrier vehicle okay yeah that like leaves the the, the carrier vehicle leaves the base flies to where the problem is lets out all the you know lets out all the little specialty trucks onto the ground sure the flying vehicle maybe goes around and does some flying stuff i'm kind of envisioning that transport from andor when the uh, corpos came in the first couple of episodes it was like the, a pyramid that was flying and like gunships came off of it i can't tell if dom's frozen or in deep thought oh mm. there you are <laughs> I, I, I have not seen oh i'm probably mm. frozen uh, it, it happens every few minutes where do yeah, my internet, internet yeah, 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 for yeah. some reason. Um, um, sure, no worries. We'll, anyhow, we'll we'll get through it. Um, so, yeah, presumably some. Oh, kind that's of interesting. Like... David Bodie mentions. Sorry, David. Uh, David Bodie mentions that there's a feature that gives you the bigger on the inside power, uh, yeah. like the TARDIS from. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, but give give me a sense of scale, Dominic. When you're thinking of these, each each of these vehicles um, are like, are we talking about, you know, is it range in size? Are we talking about each one of these are the size of a cruise liner, or are they the size of a of a tractor? Are they the size of? Nah, a... I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking probably like maybe the size of a tank. Okay ish maybe maybe a little bigger um like and how many how many like definitely big enough that you can get up and walk around inside of it but not like so okay. ludicrously big that you can fit like 30 people in it mm. Gotcha, gotcha. And then, so that's sort of like, uh, almost like, a, I would imagine, kind of a like an RV Got size, it. like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It almost yeah. feels like, Dominic, that there should be at least one that's like lifeboat size that could fit like 100 people. Or yeah, something. like, I, I'm thinking that might be, that might be like the underwater one. Okay. Hmm. Like All a right, rescue so you... one, like where they put people that are in danger while the other vehicles are doing their thing, trying to mm. stop happening oh yeah that could definitely be like the functionality of one now, of them do you have a do you have a vehicle that carries vehicles well that's the the, that's the vehicle the, that carries vehicles is the jet is the okay oh gotcha gotcha so and, not, and so, the, the idea so, is you'd have one member of the team whose specialty it is to fly the jet sure do that drop like, off. aerial rescue and yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so now does that jet detach from the hq and yeah you know, like okay, that's where I, and... okay that's making some sense to me um let's yeah, see and i feel like the vehicles need to be specialized so that they might come from the same same chassis but each of them have different tools and things that they yeah and it, like there might be some common tools between them like some of them probably have like grappling hooks on them like that's probably a pretty common Oh, yeah, kind teams. of yeah, communication systems and things that allow them to, you know, be in constant connection. Right. Yeah. But, Claude, for the record, the uh, movie about the death boat in 1997 made like the most money ever for a couple of decades. I hate it. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm thinking that, you know, like the, the big giant fire engine thing has immunity to fire and fire mm. suppression effects on it. OK, whereas, right. you know the underwater one has water movement types and sonar yeah yeah well so how many different vehicles are there um well you know it's adaptable for how many people you have playing okay uh, sort of what i i wrote up was i wrote like i wrote up like a list of different kinds of like rescue types that i could conceivably be like yeah, you could make you could build a vehicle around doing that kind of rescue. 
Okay. You can build a vehicle around doing fire rescue, underground rescue, alpine, arctic, underwater, aerial. Like, you, you could build a vehicle around each of those types and then, okay. you know, lay them out to the players and say, here, here are a bunch of options. Someone, someone pick aerial because that's what the plane is. But other than that, Here are a bunch of options and I'll tailor adventures so that you guys will have stuff to do. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So as as the uh, you know, as the game master, you'll figure out making sure that the aquatic person isn't in right. the middle of the desert. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that the, makes sense. you know, by setting the part of the adventure at a lake in the desert, you know, like oasis in the desert that the water guy has to go into. Quick well, it's it's funny would. how many natural disasters blend into each other when they happen, especially in like apocalyptic level yeah. superhero stories. Yeah. Like just because it's a big volcano doesn't mean you don't need the, the water person or the. Well, yeah, we did talk a bit about that because it, it could be responsible for tectonic stuff, for uh, mm -hmm. tsunamis, for earthquakes and fire. Yeah. And so you kind of get a little bit of everything except for maybe snow. Yeah. yeah. Like, because that's the thing is that. When you think about, like you say, oh, it's so hard to build stuff around the like the aquatic character, and then you say, oh, not as much as you think. You'd be surprised how much like how easy it is to include a water feature in any particular setting or adventure. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, that makes sense. Said, even in the desert, you can throw in a, an oasis in the middle of the desert. And yeah. the water guy gets to do stuff. The water guy gets to hang out in a little puddle um, with a with a fern and a palm tree. Uh, and <laughs> hey, um, I mean, I'm an earthquake in Vegas could make the Hoover Dam crack, and then you've got a whole damn heck situation yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's awful. Earthquake. Yeah, it's an absolutely. inland tsunami. That's horrible. Um, yeah, you know, and, and uh, David Bodie mentions if you're running a large Western March campaign, uh, a lot of the characters, every character. Uh, can have their own specialties like the scuba guy. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. so, uh, I know folks keep mentioning, um, uh, mask GI Joe, of course. Yeah. These are all sort of evocative. Now, do you see this as sort of a quasi, like, is it a, um, uh, is it an NGO or is it a, a, a governmental organization? Like, it's just like one, some rich guy with some. No, I, I, I think it's definitely, I think I definitely am envisioning this as sort of like an international. Like a like, United Nations, like a project of the UN. Yeah, cooperation. Yeah. Uh, the world I'm, I'm planning on setting this on is like not too distant future, world government. Got you, yeah. Mm -hmm semi-utopian oh, i see okay so sort of like a almost like a uh star a diversified star trek kind of vibe like a, a little bit like a little bit like as i said like not too distant future like mid 21st century yeah yeah like late mid 21st century so that the technology isn't too outlandish but it's also you know There's world peace with everybody except Mother Nature, who's still trying to kill us. Yeah. And, and well, also, I'm definitely planning on doing some of the stuff of, like, now that we've achieved world peace, there's a lot of technological development, and a lot of it's happening really fast. And yeah. because a lot of it's happening really fast, it isn't always done super safely. Sure. So, these these know, experiments gone wrong or, or something, you know... You know uh, Oh, oh no, the, the new hyper rail that we were setting up is out of control. And the, like, you know, the, the trans African like hyper monorail is going to crash. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and then that's a good question. Do you, will you take any of the uh, rescue endeavors to a, an alternate sort of um, any sort of like uh, breaking time and space or, going to new sort of, um, you know, otherworldly locations? Like, will there be, like, a, a rescue on the moon? I don't, I don't particularly see it, but it could, you know, it, it could. It could, that could definitely be, like, a, that would definitely be, like, a finale type thing. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. 
shoot, even doing this campaign with like superheroes and supervillains fighting in the background could be really cool. Yeah. Like being the people who are there to keep everybody safe while this while this apocalypse is happening with yep. the heroes oh, beating each other up. Very interesting. Sort of like a, a very like removed from you know, fighting the bad guy or fighting the, you know, or, or yeah. whatever. And, and yeah, your damage control. Humanity. Right. Yeah. That's something I think about when I'm, like, thinking about rescue games. Because, you know, obviously this whole thing came about to me, like, as the thought of, like, I want to run a rescue game as, well, do I want it to be a game in a superhero world where superhero stuff is going on and also your rescue people? Or do I want this to be in a world with no superheroes yeah. But it's the fact that you guys are the rescue people that make you the hero that make you the heroes. I like it. So where have you settled <laughs> for this particular notion? I've settled on the I've definitely settled on the latter in, in this being a a a world that there are no there are no empowered individuals. Okay, I like it. I like it. Um, and and that that's that helps, I think, too, as we sort of look at this world through the through that lens of this is where it comes from, and then we don't have to worry about cleaning up superhero messes. Um, but I'm we really do. Have... I'm really picturing like Vought International, but twenty percent more ethical. Like they have a damage control <laughs> that has to go and clean up the messes and keep people safe because they actually care about people instead of just money. Yeah, you know, Gene asks, uh, "What? How many people? Uh, what? What? How big is the team?" Probably like five or six. That's probably like your, and then, you know, that, that's always like your good standard five man band plus sixth ranger type. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Are you are you picturing that as the entire organization, or are you thinking like that's a squad of individuals? In the that that's like the yeah, that's like the squad. Because mm-hmm. and bringing it back to the headquarters stuff. Definitely has personnel, definitely has security, definitely has... Simon mentions that any powers would be part of a device in that yes. rescue setting. Absolutely, that makes yes, perfect sense. absolutely. Okay, all right. So yeah, you can definitely still have increased strength and demolition power, what have you, but it's all part of the equipment and all part of the devices. Warden mentions, Alex, that uh, that'd be way more than 20%. <laughs> yeah probably i like that um okay so i what i like about that is that if you end up you know at your session zero you can sit down and say here's what we've got you know you you can play these you know these are the you know or or you've got these options how would you like to mix them and and kind of match them and get something creative from who's playing but then they, they kind of set the tone so you don't have to be like you are water here's your water vehicle period that's all you get Yes. Right, you would have them. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah, was, it's not, yeah, yeah. If not I just, was, oh, go ahead. Go ahead go, go. It's like, yeah, it's not just the water vehicle. You also get, you know, all sorts of devices for underwater stuff, and you know, special high tech scuba gear, and I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and fun that then, you know, if you that session zero can also be a, a synergistic time for everyone to kind of think about how they might be supporting, you know, a, a team. Um, I like that a lot. Yeah, if uh, I was writing the session zero document for this session zero, I would consider bringing some example builds of specialized vehicles. Yeah. Optional power, like optional tech options and things like that for people to discuss and mill mm-hmm. over. One of the things I'm definitely planning on bringing to the table, and I thank you guys for creating this because I think it's a neat effect that I want to mess around with and and test, you know, in play, um, uh, the tether power. Real quick, RC says to me, uh, what was it, 69,420 of requesting a Magnaforce Patreon game. <laughs> I use the Magnaforce a bunch in some of the stuff I've run. RC's been asking for 190 years. Yeah, <laughs> the Magnaforce yeah. stuff. Yeah. Claude says, uh, what PL would uh, would be placing, would we be placing this at, given the skills seems far more important than the so, offensive or defensive So that's the games. fun thing. I, I'm thinking of having it be a thing where the characters, like the physical people, are power level 6. The vehicles they drive are power level 8 in terms of cap, like power level capping. So Got that, it. So the vehicles still feel a little bit more powerful, but not ludicrously so. 
Oranon mentions, Alex, hey, a mix and match of device templates like they are in Power Profiles is always a great approach mm -hmm. to, yeah, to ease character design. Pieces, that's always fun. You could, yeah, yeah, it really yeah. It, it helps because when you have such a wide open concept as create a person who specializes in this kind of rescue, narrowing that down for a player who's coming in who might not have that background of information as to what exactly all goes into like mm -hmm. being a, an Arctic rescue person or being a sled dog or whatever. Uh, um, Robbins <laughs> mentions Fast and the Furious. That's not, I mean, that is an, an apt sort of comparison. If maybe the, the medium itself is not the best uh, <laughs> adventurous example, but, but yeah, I like it. Um, so, so Dominic, I'm, I'm wondering from your perspective, what kind of, given that, you know, so we're, we are, uh, we're giving you sort of, um, advice and thoughts and ideas based on, on kind of your, your guidelines. What are, is there anything that you feel like is missing anything that you want to, um, pieces of this puzzle that are, are not quite as clear. Nothing like super like stands out just yet. I just think that there's, there's some interesting stuff you can do with this, especially with the vehicles in, you know, making them feel really personal and really, um, and, and so, as I said, that the headquarters isn't so much it's care uh, isn't so much a character. Yeah. The vehicles that the players are driving around in very much will be there, like feel like sort of secondary characters. It's like mm -hmm. the Power Rangers Zords or you know the Magna Forces Guardians, as it were. Yeah, yeah, or that makes sense. In the me. case of the Inspiration. In, in the case of the inspiration for all of this, the Thunderbirds. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, Alex, when you're providing counsel for folks, or or you're you know even working on stuff of your own, and and understanding that Dominic has a, a very kind of a prescribed plan and sort of uh, an idea that is pretty pretty fleshed out with some extra thoughts on kind of where to get some resources uh, that that you might not have known about before. What are some things that you give people or advice or things that you do any tricks of the trade or or additional thoughts that you kind of snag your mind as you're kind of thinking about this well i think from a gming perspective for this kind of adventure especially since there isn't an antagonist dri driving the action because usually superhero stuff is reactive the villain does something and then the heroes do something and then it's back and forth what I would do in preparation for this kind of adventure is spend a lot of time boning up on the skill challenge rules Mm -hmm. um, mm. because a lot of that is going to be simulated through skill challenging and being open to a lot of improvisation on the part of the players for that. Yeah. But is the it, other thing I would focus it. on, the other thing I would focus on is making little scenes within the skill challenge that involve NPCs that involve yes. like specific interactions with people who are in danger or specific benefits that the heroes can gain with this trial by yeah. doing something cool and heroic because you want you you want macro challenges and you want micro challenges and i think an interesting way that i could do that and keeping it keeping kind of in line with you know what we're talking about here with vehicles and headquarters and such you could use the vehicle stuff for the more macro scale skill challenges mm -hmm. while having the player the characters the ground level characters doing the micro level skill checks and uh the the more on the ground character interaction back and forth type stuff so yeah. you know real quick As, I wanna, um, I, well, let me let me just make this a, just a quick clarification i believe as i understand it so dominus x machina says is there an overarching yeah. supervillain or rival organization in your campaign a hood to your international rescue if you will and the idea is sort of this is um a group that is uh, they're working against Natural disasters. Natural disaster as enemy, right? Yes, very, very much so. I, I will note, very, very good, Dominus Ex Machina, because yeah, yeah, in in Thunderbirds there is the Hood who invariably pops up to cause disasters from time to time to like lure them out and try to uncover their secrets. I definitely could include something like that from time to time, like have sort of a, a bad guy who occasionally shows up it definitely wouldn't be the focus gotcha so the focus really is about the rescue element 
and the yeah. opportunity to to sort of assemble and create a plan to work against the natural disaster or some some right. even unnatural disaster if you're talking about the evolution of technology and to a degree that we've lost uh, we've lost control yeah. of it or something. And, and as John Paul Jack says, yeah, there 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 can also be all sorts of other like one off antagonists, terrorist groups, radical environmentalists, scrupulous soldiers, leaders, saboteurs, yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. Definitely. Th- those but you did talk about this as a time in the world where we've reached a certain peace. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, you could definitely have these sort of one-off things, but it, I, I definitely want to try and keep the focus on the rescue more than anything. Ornan mentions, uh, yeah, I was going to mention how the group characters fit into everything with the vehicles. Yeah. Is there some sort of good ratio to balance between the characters' mm-hmm. gameplay and the vehicles' gameplay? Yeah, I, I mean, I think def- I, I think I think some of the ways that you can really get around that is by having there just be some problems that the vehicles are too big and bulky and unwieldy to solve. Yeah, yeah. Um, they they also fuel and equipment and all that kind of stuff and yeah. maintenance and things. You know, you got to kind of. Those are some very obvious limitations. Yeah, yeah. You know, like like if. You got a bunch of people trapped, you know, in a in a narrow crevice. You're not going to be going in with the giant RV thing, unless yeah. it's burrowing. Right. As Simon mentions, uh, that the HQ as well gives uh, heroes access to resources that are too large to carry with them. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 that makes sense. I'm suddenly picturing like a billionaire who who feels like the organization is de- is under monetized and is trying to make them look silly so he could buy them out. To force them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like he's actively yeah. making natural disasters worse so that they have a, a less than stellar track record and then he buys them out. So well, that, that does make the, all their money. It, it does beg the question, Dominic, what is the origin story? Mm. Where does this begin? I mean, because, you know, just because it's humanity, it's got to start with an idea. Yeah. Oh, but I, one one green Ronin resource that would be good to look at when designing this this specific kind of adventure is the first part of a cold day in Midtown, the astonishing oh, adventure. Oh, okay. When the blizzard first strikes, there's a really good example of running the skill challenge with small scenes nestled in nice. the skill challenge. Nice. Oh, Very nice. I have not read a cold day in Midtown. I don't have that one. Yeah, oh, that's oh. a good resource if you're looking to run something like this. I'll have to, a natural disaster. I'll, I'll have to pick that one up. Yeah, and Astonishing Adventures are designed to rip stuff out of them if you want to use just one kind of scene in another story. Yeah, later. or, yeah, or even, uh, yeah. even the assets inside, you know, can be, mm-hmm. you know, several different, like the lighthouse could be the, you know, yeah. um, obelisk could be all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that's one of the reasons I enjoy having uh, Danger Zones mm-hmm. as, as, as a resource because there are just so many little sidebars in there. Really that brilliant, like, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. are like, these are some really oddly specific hazards that you can throw down. So Apuk's got a question for the both of you. Let's see here. There are three main ways I've seen a Voltron Magnaforce mecha character built, alternate form, a normal power suit, just larger, and as a vehicle. Would it? I'd be interested in hearing both Alex and Dominic's personal opinions on which of those they prefer and why. Why don't we have you go first, Alex? Well, much as many things, when somebody asks me a Mutants and Masterminds question, I will say it depends. <laughs> <laughs> um, I personally like the idea of them being two separate character sheets because when you move to the mecha scale, you're basically scaling up to that level of challenge. So things that are beneath that should feel suitably beneath that. Um, But that only really works if you're running like a mecha versus mecha or a mecha versus kaiju kind of situation where you just change the parameters of PL. So instead of PL 8 to 15 being related to street level superheroes up to cosmic level superheroes, you change how you're defining those in your head to match like origin King Kong, King Kong versus Godzilla King Kong all the way up as you're going up and powered by the kaiju themselves. Because you're looking at a whole new scale of adventure. Trying to do like a Godzilla versus superhero thing is very different than doing a Godzilla versus King Kong type of fight. And as someone who has also run a number of kaiju games, yes, correct that. Yeah, because it, I mean, you could go, if you wanted to be obnoxious, you can go to like PL20 for your big kaiju or whatever, but that's just moving the numbers up and it's just. Yes. 
that's just numbers go up. Yeah, and I I think it's better to reimagine the scale for yourself as you're coming into right as you're doing with that. And th and that is if the mecha slash robots are the are the prime characters in the story. If it's Which something that happens very rarely, I would look into using something like a separate sheet that is higher power level than the characters. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think I would ever use vehicles for it because Mecha and Voltrons and things like that are very humanoid in shape and ability. So right. I, I like the idea of doing something more, more character driven. Yeah. Whereas what I'm working with here is very much in the vehicle, very much in the vehicle scope, very much in, in that. And, you know, something I've learned through doing vehicles, because I have a couple characters with vehicles and headquarters and that kind of stuff, um, uh, is that you can get a lot on a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hold on real quick. I want to add this real fast. Um, Raymond, I, I'm presuming you're talking about Misfit Studios' uh, Metahuman Martial Arts book uh, is a good... Uh, is good for massive mobile bases. It has an expanded vehicle size chart all the way up to cosmic cool, uh, which is the size of a planetary solar, solar system. I love that. Um, their better mousetrap book has an additional HQ traits that you can use. Um, yeah, nice. Better mousetrap is a great book. I love better mousetrap. It's a great, it's a great product. Oh, I, I just had a thought that just popped into my head as a vehicles type question. And I want to know your thoughts on this, Alex. Um, and especially as from the person who suggested this topic, Oranon will appreciate that I'm asking this. Uh oh. <laughs> how would you cons how would you consider statting out as a vehicle a bicycle? Just a regular bicycle? Uh, in this case, I have a bicycle that uh, there's a character that we have, Tachyon, who has a bicycle that does super stuff. It, it can time travel. It's a time traveling bicycle. Uh. But, but like the thing is, it's the size of a bicycle. It's yeah. Um, well, I, I would. I want your thoughts on that. I would start by looking at the stat block for motorcycle because they'll be similar. But I think the size is is weird because yeah. I, I, I would. Something. I want to call it size small because it's significantly smaller than a motorcycle. But if it's size small, a human can't ride it. <laughs> Yeah, like it's it's so weird, right? So I think it has to be size medium, strength negative one, speed. Yeah. Speed is a dash because it's related to your strength. So I think the speed yeah. ranks would be your strength plus one, maybe. Um, yeah. Defense, oh, you know I'd probably move it up a little bit. Toughness, I'd move it down a little bit. I'm dropping in real quick just to say, hey, folks, um, for those of you listening on demand, um, uh, check to make sure that you're looking at the live chat because uh, I dropped a link to Misfit Studios. They have a ton of resources, headquarters, construction guide, all kinds of great stuff. And we love it when folks uh, visit our you know partner publishers. So go check them out. Is it limited as time travels to when the bike was invented? No. So this is the kind of funny thing. It's the character who uses it is a speedster in like the flash mold and the bicycle is their equivalent of like the cosmic treadmill. Mm. I do like Rambo Pat's idea of buying it as speed with removable rather than as a vehicle, because yeah. you can look at them. You could look at a bicycle the wrong way and it'll fall apart. No. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'd, I'd also suggest that if it weren't for the fact, the character that's using it is also a speedster. So they've already yeah. got speed. Well, then a question, what kind of bicycle was the wicked witch pedaling when she was the human version of herself in the Wizard of Oz. Um, yeah, is that, uh, what kind of specialty? I mean, because was that a time and space sort of thing? I And I also have to a... ask, I have to ask one of my friends on, uh, one of my friends who, he has a character who, whose entire character is built around riding bicycles. Okay. And just... <laughs> But in this case, it is just regular bicycles. Right. Well, I mean, that's the question, you know, is 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 the Wicked Witch pedaling a weather bicycle or is it is it some kind of interdimensional travel bicycle? Yeah, I think the bicycle is just there 
and she's just using it as a focus for her magic. I I like it, Alex. That's a pretty solid explanation. So really, she's she's bringing the magic wherever she goes, and she just happens yeah. to be. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. Um, but um, oh. I, I somebody's asking about size categories. If they're where they have ranks, or is it a range? Or is it more concrete? I would say it's a range, and <sighs> sort of go with your gut. <laughs> Here's another question I had. This is one that occurred to me like a couple months ago and it bugged me that I couldn't find a solid answer on it. How do the size categories of vehicles and headquarters correlate to the size ranks? That's probably something we need to solidify a little bit better because they are, they're similar, but different to size ranks. Like a large vehicle would be size rank four. A huge one would be size rank eight. Um, Okay. Because there are all these times 12. where I'm like, yeah, there because there have been times where I'm trying to put something that's like, you know, on a VTT, I'm trying to put, you know, a character who's a certain size rank mm-hmm. on yeah, a map, yeah. and then I'm trying to put a vehicle that's a certain size rank on the map, and I'm like, how do these, how do these? I I think you can comfortably put out. vehicles into the same into the same templates as characters, but HQs would be very different. Um, like I think if you're doing a large vehicle, it could still be like a four by four or whatever compared to the, or the one by one for a regular character, two by two for large, three by three for, uh, huge and one more each as they go up to awesome size. Uh, HQs are completely different though. Cause an awesome size headquarters is like a, like a moon sized battle station. <laughs> I'm looking That's at the no chat. Moon. <laughs> that's yeah. not a moon. Uh, Oranon says we're almost out of time, and I'm like, what are you talking about, Oranon? We're not almost. Oh my gosh, we're almost out of time. Yeah. Uh, as per the norm, we get into these conversations and we just get into them. Yeah, um, we'll burn through little, it. We burn well, you know. Yeah, burn through the time with a lot more questions and opportunities to sort of explore the topic to a, a more granular degree. And um, let's see, Oranon, just say, um, wouldn't mind if we do a second episode on on HQs. Wouldn't mind talking about how to use them in a normal campaign uh, versus, versus uh, West Marches. Uh, uh, please help. I keep making them and never using them at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think that uh, here's the thing, you know, one of the, what makes ideas like this really gel is when you get a practical kind of application, you get to kind of see it in motion. You get to kind of, um, you know, run through the whole kind of thing and then you can kind of tweak and change it and and evolve it as as you kind of play it um, do you have any plans for that uh me yeah uh doing it in person oh, well okay. or doing it uh in an actual place uh style yeah. uh, actually yes and this is i assume this is where we're segging into it um <laughs> part of the reason i am on this Mumamo today is because uh, I am announcing that I am doing an actual play here on Green Ronin in about about a month and a half's time. Yeah. uh, I am going to be running a one shot of this uh, rescue game, rescue team that we spent a good chunk of this Moomamo talking about with Alex and Troy and, um, and Steve. I forgot to mention Steve's on an away mission. Um, yes. He's with us, of course, in spirit, but uh, but he'll be playing as well. And uh, and, and then mm-hmm. a, a additional, there'll be um, three or so other players yeah. involved as well. We're, I'm currently, we're, I'm currently reaching out to a couple of people. Um, so far, I've had some people who have who are definitely interested, and we're going to see if the the schedules line up for it. How uh, fun! And we'll have an update on that, you know, when we have an update on that. But um, uh, you want me to uh, announce the name of the... Let's uh, do it, topic. yeah. Okay. Give, give us uh, all the deets. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, do, 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 do. I have the, I have the thing right here. Uh, this will be following the adventure of the Catastrophe Response and International Situation Intervention Squadron, also known as Crisis. I like how this logo is gri- gripping both of your faces. <laughs> <laughs> Stop grabbing my head. I'm not a basketball. <laughs> I love it. Great logo, by the way, of your design. 
Thank you. Very, yeah, very This cool. will be the first actual play that has custom characters. Yeah. So. Nice. Okay, very cool. And so um, we're going to be doing this on Friday, or uh, what, what is the date we po- we picked? Uh, I think it was, yeah, you're right. It's like Friday, Friday, June 30th. So it, it's right. a bit off. It's, 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 um, it's about a month and a half out and I'm sure it'll get brought up again next week at the Mumamo planning stream. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Cause, yeah. Cause... And so, so what we'll do is we're going to continue to kind of have this conversation about, um, you know, how we're putting things together and maybe we'll do that, you know, we'll do sort of a offline session zero, but do a a sort of a a broadcast session zero and we'll kind of work all of the pieces of that puzzle out. But, you know, Dominic, um, when you, uh, so the reason this came about is because Dominic sent in an idea and I said, but well, what if we did this and kind of amplified it? Um, Not, not every idea that's going to come in is going to lend itself to an actual play, but yeah, it's I, certain it certainly will lend itself well yeah. to a future conversation and dialogue and all of those things. And yeah. so my uh I, my I, call I, to go for it. I, I brought this in as an idea for Mumamo on rescue games. And then it was said like, well you could you just do an actual play of that. And I said, oh okay I can write yeah. a pitch. Yeah, and I love it. And we, you know, um, it's fun. It's a great idea, and we're, we're looking for those kinds of fun, interesting ideas. And so my my call for folks who are hanging out, thinking, hmm, you know, what what, what kind of thing could I provide or offer? Um, you know, uh, whether it's an idea, whether it's you know, joining us and having a conversation about something in a, on a deeper level, a particular thing that you love about mutants and masterminds you know, and how you've utilized it in very unique and fun ways. We are, um, uh, join, you know, we are, we're here to have those conversations. Uh, or was like, I, I hadn't uh, heard about this until now. Yeah. Um, you know, the, we, we married the topic with the, uh, with this concept just because it's, it fits so well. Um, so Ornon, you are, you are certainly responsible for being part of that synergy and, yes. uh, you know, and so send a note to let's play at greenrunning.com and be thoughtful about kind of um, how you would like to explore a particular subject or topic in, in let us know too, if it's something like you want to join us on the program uh, you want to just have us run with a topic. We can do all of that stuff, but, uh, but you know, let's get creative and think of some fun yeah. and interesting things this that we can do. Great. I, I, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so glad that you guys could have me on. And, you know, I love talking with you guys about this system and oh, yeah. uh, stuff that we're all working on for it. It's 100% our pleasure and always a blast hanging out with you, Dominic, and looking forward to this actual play. Uh, you know, a, a unique opportunity. We're doing something a little different, and we like that. Yeah, um, and, you know, the, so there will be stuff about this as we get closer to it. And well, this is so funny. Squire says, <laughs> why is my idea of the Gravy Squatch Hunters actual play been ignored? For the record, Squire, um, the Gravy Squatch Hunters actual play is what I'm going to do in October. I'm <laughs> locking that in now. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to hunt and kill the Gravy Squatch. No. Uh, you know, so Alex, you are, you <laughs> are, gravy you are a bit of <laughs> uh, I wouldn't know how to do that if I could. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't, you can't hide gravy. You can't hide gravy squatch. Um, but Alex, I'm wondering um, real quickly um, when, uh, when we're, sorry, I'm, I lost my train of thought here. Okay. Yeah. So um, when we're looking at what what's happening this week for you, what have you got cooking? What are some things that people can look forward to? Uh, well, to answer Gene and RC's question real quick, the sure, next sure. Gene adventure is uh, Night of the Living Robots, which Ooh, yeah. is, um, I'm waiting on a cover to come in and then it'll be ready to go. So I just need, we're waiting on art. So that'll be ready when it's soon. It, when it's soon, that's right. Okay. Um, <laughs> Love me some robots. Robots. As for, uh, as for what I've got going on this week, uh, Wednesday... I will be back with the Freedom Week Dark in the Multiverse of the Master Mage, and our heroes have just gone to the Marvel Universe where they have been trapped in WandaVision. So, oh, <laughs> nice. It's going to be nuts. So, that's, come that's check like a out. couple levels of meta. It yeah, really, it's, it really is. They ran into Deadpool and he accused them of being bad mutants and masterminds characters. So <laughs> uh, I like it. I like Very it. Very balanced, <laughs> worst. <laughs> yeah. Where do they go for um, uh, to, to get 
plugged into that? Uh, that's at twitch.tv slash untold stories project. Nice. Awesome. And um, uh, origins, all my origins events are signed up. So thank you everybody who. Oh, you're up all for, booked up. I'm all booked up. But and if, uh, if you are going to Pittsburgh, I have been, they have asked me to come back to be the guest of honor for the Pittsburgh gaming expo this year. So. Yay. When is that? It's in October. Uh, TM. It's in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not even summer yet. We've got time. Oh, boy. Uh, so, Dominic, where can folks find you if they want to have a talk or, uh, you know, share some thoughts or tell you how you're wrong? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, best, honestly, the best place to reach out to me is probably through Discord. Um, I, I'm i on the Freedomverse Discord, which... Um, uh, is one of the big mutants and masterminds communities out there. Um, yeah, it uh, is. I am uh, Temzik on there. Yeah, nice. Uh, on, and on someone the over there from someone from the Freedomverse, will you drop in the chat uh, a link to that Discord? Yeah, uh, for me. Um, very cool. Well, listen, it has been a phenomenal show. Uh, Dominic, thanks again for having the, you know, the creativity and sharing your thoughts with us. Um, Alex, always a pleasure. Really love the way we're able to kind of grab what's going on in the chat. Um, sounds good. Yeah. Um, thanks. Sorry, Apook said our RC had already dropped the link, which is great. It is one of those things, too, that, you know, when you drop the link near the time that people say, hey, we got a link, um, it helps people zero in on where it lives in the chat. Um, but uh, with that being said, uh, chat, always much love to you. Thank you all for hanging out with us. And um, we are, uh, yeah, this is the end of the program. I've, my mind is is a blur <laughs> at thinking of the opportunities. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a blast. So th thanks again, Dominic. Yeah. All right, friends. Ciao. We'll see you, uh, see you Thursday for Thursday. Bye.